Parliament packs up for the summer tomorrow, and when it returns in September, there's probably going to be only one story in town. Who will be next leader of the Labour Party? It's dominated quite a lot recently too. We'll know that on September the 12th. But in the meantime, the four contenders have been battling it out in the TV studios. Here's a flavour of them on the Sunday Politics yesterday with Andrew. So I just think it is wrong to say, as Andy's done, that we should apologise for public spending want, on our okay. NHS, on Sure Start, well, on our public services. Quick, that quick did not cause the financial crisis. And we should well. take on the Tory myths. Years over the next five years, we will get the same results. But Look at the victims of... of what the European Central Bank are doing to Greece: the poverty, I, the I unemployment. Do. They are the and the. Oh, this work from a mile I from visit. where we are. So can't win it if we just try and run the 1997 yeah. election Only again. So this has got to be about 2020 right. and the future. Of Otherwise, the we will not win. We've got Only to reach out in all directions. Only two, clearly. Uh, well, those were the four leadership contenders, Yvette Cooper, Liz Kendall, Andy Burnham and Jeremy Corbyn. Hustings yesterday. We're joined now by John Rental from The Independent and Zoe Williams from The Guardian. Welcome to both of you. Now, you saw in that film, I'm presuming both of you watched, of course, um, Liz Kendall right. and Andy Burnham arguing over whether Blairite is now a dirty word. Is it a dirty word? Oh, yeah, in, in order, in order to confess. Know. Rental frustrated and exasperated that actually your hopes of... ..of what's realistic and what the centre wants and what realism means. And whether they're left or right, you know, whether Ed Miliband was left or right, everything he said he felt like he had to row back from in order not to seem incredible, in order not to seem economically implausible. They were, const they were obsessed with the idea that they had to seem trustworthy and as a result of that they never really got a message across. You know, one minute they were for the poor, the next minute Rachel Reeves was saying we're not the party for people on benefits. One minute they were buying the Tory rhetoric about businesses as wealth creators. The next minute they were talking about businesses as parasites. They never actually worked out what they, what they wanted because they were so kind of, you know, strangled in a way but by this idea of what the centre men. Right, but in John Rental's point, though, is if you look at the candidates now, they yeah. all seem to be trying to calibrate some the, very right. complicated message to either the party first and then presumably to the country that actually they haven't learnt the lessons. Well, exactly. Of what's exactly, but what they're trying to calibrate, what they're trying to do is actually work out a message that could be as popular and as hopeful as 1997 while staying within their very narrow bands of what realism is. Right. So, we, And I think that's genuinely impossible. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. So either they anoint another loser or they have a genuine... Kind of is recall. Jeremy Corbyn a loser in the... In the in he this wouldn't be. War? I don't think he would be. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think anointing him as a loser would be the same as anointing any of the others. I think he is actually genuinely capturing something to do with kind of breaking old precepts and talking in a different way. Now, I don't agree with everything he says and I don't agree with all his priorities, but I do think that he is at least capturing some optimism. The others don't have any optimism. Really, what's optimistic <laughs> about Jeremy Corbyn in, in this? Because well, uh, when I've uh, listened to him, he seems to be wanting to recapture a time when, when Labour lost elections. Absolutely. And, um, you know, young Greatest people hits. like... I mean, I, I do I do admire the idealism of young people like, like Zoe. Um, oh. But, you know, she makes me feel very, very old. I mean, can you honestly tell me that you think Yvette, Liz or Andy Liz, are saying yes. anything? What's Liz, what's Liz well, saying, she's saying then? That actually that, I mean, she's saying that the Labour Party got it all wrong in, in 2015 and needs, needs to sure. persuade people who voted Conservative that they would be better off voting Labour. I know, but what now, you're if that is a very about... simple lesson and nobody in the Labour Party know, wants to John, listen to it. All you're talking about is simple elec electoral kind of nitpicking. Well, it's I want the basis. To know what the actual it's, it's... hopeful vision of the future is. But is, 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 is Liz Kendall not espousing a Blair? Is, is she not quite clear about espousing a Blair? It may not be the oh, right vision, I mean, but it is a Blairite vision. Really? I mean, you know, all this kind of, we're not, Ed Miliband was too fixated on the poor, we're going to fixate on aspiration. All this language is very old-fashioned and boring. People aren't interested in that kind of aspiration. Well, Melanie, as a new MP listening to this, no doubt um, taking down every word, you're backing <laughs> Yvette Cooper. I am. Yes. Why? Well, I mean, partly because of uh, some of the things that, that Zoe's just mentioned. I do think that there needs to be a message of hope. I do think that there needs to be a really strong vision um, of what Britain would look like under a Labour government. And when I spoke to Yvette, some of the things mm. that she was talking about... Which around things? Building, uh, well, building a, new, uh, building a new economy around a, a kind of digital revolution. I thought that that was something that if that was rolled out and explored in more detail, um, that um, we could actually capture 
um, the imagination of quite a lot of young people um, and people who are um, you know mid-career and look at a new industry in the country. But do you think that, that would be enough? Focus on. Would that be enough think, to catch a Conservatives' uh, I don't think seats? It's that the only want... thing. I don't. I mean, I, it was an example. You asked me for right. an example. That was what I, I spoke to her about. And I do think that there needs to be, um, you know, this idea of economic competence is is something that that the Labour Party is, um, you know, worrying itself to death over. And, and you don't think it should? No, be. I do. I do think it should do. I, do, I think that, that it's really important. And so to say we're going to grow the economy, and this is one of the ways that we're going to do that, so that we can give people more jobs, more training, um, you know, try and progress people. Um, you know, from from where they are, that aspiration that Zoe doesn't like <laughs> as a term. Um, that, you know, that we well, offer people that, and well, I, but, and I mean, that's but, why I was reassured John, by that. But the thing is, John, maybe. Um, it is the case that Liz Kendall is the one candidate who is most out of touch with the party and therefore doesn't stand a chance of being elected because of that well, I mean, um, well, than the of others. Course, of course she is. Andy I Burnham, because we haven't I, really I, talked I about think, him. Would, yeah. I don't think Labour Party members have gone mad as a very mature analysis. <laughs> <laughs> well, it may not be mature, but yeah, I suppose it is an, anal an analysis. I mean, how do you see well, look, the Labour Party membership? Well, look, the I mean, way is I, it, I, is I tell it you where I see it is that for years the Labour Party, the Central Command has treated the membership like an Embarrassment is that they don't, they don't really want to. They don't want to see them around. They don't want to canvass their opinions. They listen to them last after they've listened to every single other focus group they can I think just of. Think that's just it's nonsense. true. And frankly, the whole idea that there's this kind of central ground that you've got these kind of renegades trying to pull away from, and the country is in the centre, and the country will vote for the centre, is simply wrong. The centre is changing constantly. What we now call common sense. Five years ago, we would have called very right wing. But what won it then at the election? Well. What? Whoever captures the centre captures the narrative. So, you know, you had this kind of very mm. cautious, with steady hand on the tiller narrative from the Conservatives and nothing from the Labour Party. So who's well, going to win? I know you said you weren't going to... Well, Mel I, I must commend Melanie on her, on, on her aspiration because she's quite right to, to back Yvette because I think Yvette is going to win because she's, she's plainly going to get... Uh, most of Liz Kendall's uh, second preferences, and I don't think Andy Burnham actually has as much support as people she think he has. Now, what do you think? Do you think it'll be Andy Burnham? I think it will be Andy Burnham, yeah. Why? Um, because I think Jeremy Corbyn might have punched out a bit of space for him. Previous to Jeremy Corbyn, he seemed like the kind of left candidate, and now he seems a bit more central, which makes my point about the centre constantly shifting. Once you've got somebody further out, then he's, I think people who would fear a kind of radical change would suddenly see him as more plausible. And I presume you're backing, if you had a say, uh, no, Jeremy Corbyn. It's not for me to intrude on private grief. And <laughs> I, will allow, I will allow the funeral party of the Labour Party to happen. <laughs> That's so kind of I it. You know, the reality is, in British politics, we need uh, a, a, an opposition to make our democracy work properly. And at the moment, yeah. uh, I'm, I merely hope that the Labour Party gets its act together because we do genuinely need proper opposition in Parliament, proper opposition in the country. Uh, to raise everybody. Do you think they will get their act together uh, by that. September, whoever the leader no, is? No, they definitely won't no. get their act together by September. Huh? Well, obviously the Labour Party uh, goes through the cycle. It, it now needs to we to lose three elections before it comes to its senses. <laughs> well, look, I'm and, not right. Well, it's, it's, it's a terrible, terrible shame. <laughs> I mean, I thought we'd learned all this and I we didn't need to go and start PLP again. I think the is operating under the guise that we're not going to win next time. That right. Be well, well, on that positive, sure on that that positive note, uh, rather than your more negative one, John Rental and Zoe Williams, thank you.